Okay, so I've just decided I'm going to give a, a quick update on what I'm building at the moment. Um, as you can see here, it's um, one of the Airfix 48 scale links. It's another army links, it's my second army links. Uh, this one's been built with the Rotocraft um, conversion to uh, an AH1, uh, which is going to be from the uh, 3 Commando Brigade Air Squadron in the mid 80s when it's done. Uh, that means that the camouflage, as opposed to the current um, Army Air Corps camouflage of uh, grey and sort of a, a light, uh, very light olive green, uh, it's actually RF dark green and black. Um, so that makes it uh, quite a, quite a, a significantly darker scheme than, than the uh, aircraft currently wears. And because of that I wanted in 48 scale, what I didn't want to happen was uh, to create like a, a, a black hole if you like of uh, just a very dark model. So as you can see I've sprayed the, th I've sprayed the model green um, overall uh, earlier on today. Um, and for that, what I used was um, Tamiya's XF81, which is a RAF dark green, uh, which I think is a really, really nice match for dark green, but is quite dark, so I wanted to lighten it up. And the trick with lightening this colour up is uh, not to make it too grey. If you just add white, you're going to make it very grey, which doesn't look right. What we need to do is lighten the colour while keeping the uh, kind of olive brown. Uh, ready brown sort of hues that RF dark green has and so for that what I did was I lightened it using XF3 yellow and XF15 flesh in, in uh, varying amounts to the uh, to the pot um, and just played around with it till I was happy uh, I don't know if you can see that but it's actually a fair bit um, it's, it's quite light um, but once it's on the model uh, I've really been quite very happy with the way it's, it's dried. It's just what I, what I was looking for, really, in uh, in the colour. So with that on, we're ready to uh, start spraying the black. And in the same way that I didn't want a very dark green, what I don't want is a, a dead black uh, for the camouflage. So because of that, uh, what I've selected for the black portions of the scheme is um, GSI Mr. Hobby. H77 tyre black, which is a, a, in actual fact, is a very, very dark grey. Um, which is uh, what I, you know, what I, what I was looking for in a colour. So I'm just going to give that a quick stir around to see how it looks. And um, as usual, I'll be using Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner. So what I'm going to do add some leveling thinner into my brush and then I'm going to add a couple of brushfuls of the black so that I'm, I'm happy with um, basically happy with the mix I've got and what I'm going to do now is just check my paint flow and I'm really happy with that um, so, without any further ado, I'm going to uh, start freehanding the uh, the black camouflage. So one of the things I know is, having looked at photographs, it's quite difficult to get upper shots of the aircraft when it was in service, but I managed to find one that shows very nicely uh, the fact that the outer portion of the horizontal tail on these aircraft was black. So. See that's uh, that bit of free handing there. So
so you can see that I hope um, looking looking quite good there so with that it's just a case of looking now along the camouflage scheme the camouflage scheme of these um, of Army Air Corps is it, quite simple it's just uh, simply black bands against the green so my paint flow is good so with that it's just a case of outlining your black and then uh, and then filling it in As ever, when you're using Japanese lacquers or acrylics, i.e. the Tamiya or uh, GSI colours with, uh, with proper thinning, you can get a, uh, a very repeatable, easy pencil line thickness with the paint. If you have any problems at any point, if it starts to clog, just open your brush up, give it a quick spray through, and you're good to go again. Okay, so we're just looking for the next portion of the green.
So I hope you can see how uh, how well that uh, that black from Guns or GSI as they're known now is actually spraying on there. Um, I don't want to labour the point too much, but um, this is exactly why I'm not a fan of the Euro acrylics in general because there's no way on earth that I found yet that you could. Um, You could spray and get this kind of really fine uh, feathered camouflage edge. You, you, you simply can't do it with the acrylics, the European style acrylics. They um, they clog up and um, uh, and block the airbrush too readily.
Okay, something to note is that um, <coughs> I've got four of the uh, I've got four of the bands of black on there now. So you can see I've done a fair bit of um, excuse me while I had the airbrush in my mouth. I've done a fair bit of um, free handing and I'm just starting to get to the point now where with this paint I'm getting a little bit of uh, spatter so all I'm doing is putting a moist piece of uh, kitchen towel retracting the trigger as far as it will go to completely uh, withdraw the needle and then it's just a, using a little bit of uh, kitchen towel moistened in cellulose or lacquer thinner and uh, just cleaning out the nozzle over here Give it a quick spray through. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And uh, that's it, we're, we're good to go again.
so there I hope you can see um, there's that done now um, <laughs> it does make me question if any paint in the world sprays anywhere near um, as well or as pleasurably as um, GSI's aqueous hobby colour when it's properly thin I certainly don't think it does um, although I am clearly biased because it's what I use <laughs> 